Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, March 4th, 2016. This is the SOS Show with James Lott Jr. That's the Super Organizer Show with James Lott Jr. And I'm James Lott Jr., the Super Organizer. See how that works? Yeah, maybe it's already March. Where did that come from? March. Uh, this month, this year is going by too fast already. But of course, I'm very happy, and, and my life um, is always very scheduled and organized. <laughs> Because I just, that's how I live my life, uh, date by date by date by date. So welcome today. I'm glad you're here today. We're going to talk about time management and time. That's going to be a theme for today. And I'm very excited because that's one thing is universal in all of our lives. And I have a guest today, Rial Andrews, is going to be on. We'll talk about it with him. But before I begin everything, you know, I got to say good morning to the man behind, I almost said a mirror, but it's behind the glass who just stares at me and controls everything, Brian. Well, I don't control anything. You control everything. If I can control you, I would make you eat a peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> hamburger. hamburger. Which one? That was no. See, you do. You, you are at the controls. I can't do any of this without you. I literally can't. You're one of the only uh, few shows, and I'm not going to name which ones are the ones. Obviously, <laughs> name them. Name them. They're, name not, they're, them, not, them. they're them. not paying us for this uh, this time, but <laughs> you know, you're one of the only shows that 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 calls out. You know, oh, it's Brian. So I appreciate that. Oh, I, well, so I appreciate you. That's why, because it's one of those things. I mean, I, you know me. I'm the whole village. Man. You're part of my village. You take care of me. No, yeah. No, thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening Buenas. to all the listeners, whatever time they're listening. Buenos dias. Buenos tardes. Buenos noches. Buenas nachos. Yes, yes exactly. Ooh, some nachos sound good. Carnitas nachos sound good. Hey, anyway, so, yeah, we're here today, and we're ready. And today, we're actually going to take calls, too. If you guys ever want to call in uh, today with my guest, uh, Riel, I'll give out the number uh, shortly, and you'll be able to call in any time. We're going to try that out today and see what's going on. So, before that, I always give my thanks and gratitude, because I believe in giving thanks out loud. Um, it's nice to do that, put that into the universe, and to live in gratitude. And I think we all should do that. I invite everyone to do that. And so every day I wake up with some kind of thanks and gratitude for waking up that day and the people and places and things in my life. So this week I want to thank, um, again, I got to thank my folks, uh, the Hardys, hashtag Hardys. They're out there um, from the show When Calls the Heart. I do the When Calls the Heart after show on AfterBuzzTV.com. And we did our second episode this week. And once again, they are, those fans, the Hardy fans from Hallmark Channel are amazing. They have um, showered me, continue to shower me with love and acceptance, and they're also now um, checking out my blogs and hopefully my radio show and my other shows that are permeating out to my universe. So I appreciate that. I live in gratitude with that. I hope you find something that's enjoyable other than the show that we do, which we do every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on AfterBuzz TV. So I want to give them thanks and gratitude for that. Because, again, you know, we – we start out in one area, but hopefully we can all move into everybody's orbits and, you know, and and be around for everyone else and and share what we do. And I love hearing the stories, and people are sharing things with me, and I love it because we all make the world go round. So I'm think I'm just really thankful for that. I also want to give thanks and gratitude uh, to my granny in New York. Um, I hopefully will be seeing her. Uh, at the end of April, early May, uh, it's her birthday time, and also I am going to be filming a uh, web series, Broken at Love. So I want to give special gratitude and thanks to Carolina Sevis, who's actually the creator, writer, producer, and star of that web series. It's going into his third season, and she's filming it in Brooklyn. So that's where my grandma is, too, so it's all kind of coming together. And she's writing me a little small part. I'm a little nervous. I haven't acted in a while, so that should be fun. And that's going to be later. I'll keep you guys stay tuned with that, of course. Uh, so I want to give thanks and gratitude to that. And I also want to give thanks and gratitude and love to my granddaughter, Scarlett. It is her birthday weekend. Right after this show, I have to run to the airport. <laughs> and hopefully I'll make it in time to my boarding time. Um, and I'm going to Sacramento to see my, my granddaughter, Scarlett. And it's going to be uh, – she's turning 11. 11. Happy birthday. Yes, Miss Scarlett. I have a question. So you're going to be running all the way to the airport? I'm going to run down the 105. <laughs> what time's your flight? Well, my, my boarding time is 1245. Okay, well, if you run, if you leave now, you probably still won't make it. <laughs> if you're running. It's LA traffic. That's why I love it. If I run alongside the traffic, I should make it, right? How fast do you run? I've done three marathons. Have you really? Actually, seriously, in my, four, in my 40s, folks, I completed three marathons in my 40s. 
I so have I. I finished all the office season two. <laughs> yeah, not, not those kind of marathons. Oh, okay. Dang it. Actual marathons. So yes, I, I think I'll make it in time. I hope so for my, my grandbaby. I hope I make it. Um so I'm excited for her because she's turning eleven. She's like she's like eleven going on thirty five. So <laughs> she takes them she's very organized herself, which is kind of ironic. She's kinda of takes after me. And she tells me about myself all the time. As little girls do, I'm wrapped around her finger. So those are my thanks and gratitude to her and to Miss Scarlett, and I will see her later on. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, time management today because that is something that every single person has to deal with or is not dealing with in their lives. Time management is something that is how do you maximize your time every day to get things done. And depending on how you are and how you take care of things or not take care of things, you could be just running around in circles, um, losing time, you know, not getting stuff done. I mean, it's, it's just it's one of those things that just can it gets everything. There is um, a quote that I that I found from Clinton Kelly that I actually I, I kind of like, and that is and I quote: "I realized this week that I cannot do it all, so I will choose to do what I can." Fabulously, I like that. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, basically, you know, time management is the key to many things in life. You know, it, I mean, it helps you with running things and keeping things in time and making things run smoother. When you have good time management, you can actually carve out time for family and friends. Get that list done you may have for things around the house done, be in your garden. Uh, you know, as an organizer, I talk about time management, of course, all the time. And so through my practice, I offer ways of setting up management of time in your life. I just, that's one of the things that I do. But here's one thing that I learned. I call it my one truth that I learned about time management. Okay, you guys ready? 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 You can't do everything. There are not enough hours in the day or days in the week or weeks in the month. Let me say that one more time. You can't do everything. There are not enough hours in the day or days in the week or weeks in the month. Now, when I say that, I find that to be a positive message. Actually, it feels really freeing to me when I say that, and it feels like it feels very liberating to me. Because what I'm really trying to say to you is that you will never be able to do everything. Okay, get everything done. You know, all, I mean, it's, it's just okay, and it's okay. Time management is just about f- prioritizing what is important that needs to be done. Time management makes you narrow down what you want to do. It makes you work smarter, not harder. You might not be able to paint, write, sew, act all at the same time, but you might be able to do a few of those things really well and get those done. Maybe you need to drop a few things. Maybe you need to switch out a few things. I mean, it just, it just totally depends. But basically, when you set up a good schedule and good time management practicing your life will run better. And I actually wrote a blog on that. And, of course, you follow my blog, the superorganizeduniverse.com, for more tips and suggestions on setting up time management and how to look at that, actually. I help you identify it, look at it, and, and go from there. So my guest today, I'm very excited. I have a guest today. He, for many of you, when I say his name, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Wasn't he on a soap opera named uh, General Hospital? Yes, he was. But like myself, he has many talents. And has moved on to other and has other careers going on. And he decided to go into the coaching business, which I did too, of course. And he's a great coach. He's a success coach, motivational coach, motivational speaker. And he has a new niche of coaching we're going to talk about on the show today too. He's going to introduce to me and we're going to talk about today. And I get to call my friend, Riel Andrews. How are you? Hello, are you there? Good. Can you hear me? I, I can barely hear you, but can you hear me? I can hear you. My engineer is going to see if we can turn something out. Hopefully, he can hear because I can hear you. Okay, good. As long as you can hear me. All right, is, that, is that now? You can you hear me better. That's better. Yeah. Okay, you can, you can hear me better. I love live radio. I love it. It's like it's like yeah. life. We, you know, what? we just did something. We we created. We found there was an issue, and we created a solution, didn't we? Together. That, hey, that's all what it's about. You know, don't get stuck with the problem. Just. Find a solution. I'm always saying to people, what's the solution? What's the solution? I was actually trying to, I was going to try to go Facebook Live when we were on the radio show, Double Time It, but, you know, my kids uh, forget to put the phone on the charger, so I couldn't get the house phone. So there you go. <laughs> you know, and it's, I, I like it. You like me, we just roll with the punches. Hey, that doesn't work. We just keep on going. Keep it moving, right? Yes, sir. Keep it moving. Now, folks out there, if you want to call in, there is a number, and that's one 800 
1-800-405-6425. We'll take calls at any time. I'll say the number again, and I'll say it even slower, 1-800-405-6425. How do you like that? How do you like that voice? Am I crazy? So, yeah, let's start out because you said you have a new uh, niche of coaching that you want to talk about, so I want to actually talk about that first. Oh, well, actually, you know what I'm. You know, as as a coach, we're always helping people, and you know, I, I do the uh, life coach and success coach. But you know, I've been it just you know, and it's always interesting, James, how things just pop up. They've kind of been there, and you just recognize them one day. But uh, it was actually my middle son who kind of brought it to my attention. You know, as my kids, my kids now have been, you know, having. Um, aspirations to get into the acting world of course i help them with their auditions yes you know, of i course. help them prepare i help them break down the scenes and, and then also give them a lot of uh insight of how to and what to expect you know once they walk in the auditions how to address the casting directors all that and then you know um they've been having great success and my son said on his last audition, he said dad you should really coach people you know and mm. i was like you know People ask me about it all the time. I just never really thought about it. You know, you kind of don't think about it. So I've, I've just started helping coaching people, um, you know, um, for their acting auditions and preparing them, breaking down scenes. Because as you know, James, it's a very competitive world out there, so every little bit helps. So I'm happy to help people with that. Um, something I've been doing since I was 16. I just never really thought about it, you know. I think that's a great idea. I think that's so, I mean, you, you're you in the acting business. You've been in it for a long time. So, I mean, you have insight into how this works. So, I mean, I think, that's, I think your son gave you a great idea. Well, and it's like, you know, James, we've been around for a while. It's really so competitive now. I mean, I think my manager told me um, on average. I think we lost him. <laughs> We'll get him back, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll call me back. We'll get him back. <laughs> and you're on. Okay, hey, sorry about that. There we go. Hey, sorry about that. You know, as I was saying, my manager told me, you know, there's about 2,500 on average submissions per audition, you know, and usually maybe they might see 20 people, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And then when you maybe get to call back, meet the producers or whatever in the final thing, I mean, it's not just no, and you know, I'll walk in on auditions now for, yeah. you know, a day player or a smaller part. Yeah. And there's like a, you know, like what I call a five star actor sitting right there in the waiting room yeah. auditioning for the same part I am. So you, you got you to gotta have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted. And, and it's not just about, you know, delivering a good performance, it's, it's etiquette. It's, it's there's so many little things and like you say being on the inside mm-hmm. there's a lot of great teachers out there because i've studied with them but they've never ever acted right right you know i mean and there's something to be said about somebody who's actually been on the inside actually got jobs you know understands that mm-hmm. because it is really like everything else but more so than ever it is so much of, i mean how do you pick you know, right. you, you think about it. How do you pick? Who gets the part? Right. And it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's funny because I interviewed someone two nights ago on one of my other shows. Um, and folks out there, I have interviewed Rial on my uh, other show, Black Hollywood Live, called Breaking Into. And the guy said, he goes, yeah, I go on auditions. And sometimes there are like 10 guys who look just like me in the audition. We're, mm-hmm. all going, we're all going for the same part. And we all look the same. We're the same, you know, light-skinned black guy with shaved head, goatee for one part. Yeah, it, you know, and you're exactly right. I mean, I've I've been there. I've done now, here now here's the thing. Now check this out, James. This seems so simple, and I, I, I like there's there's little nuggets that I share with my kids and that, that I work with now. I know because I've been in the business since I was 16. Yes, you have. That's right. For my for my kids to be getting the reaction and the response, getting the callbacks, the you know going to producer meetings and stuff like they're getting. Um, I know is not by accident, okay? Hey, are my kids talented? Of course, I'm their dad. I think they're really talented. But I'm also not naive. So all those little things help. Now, here, I'll give you a a huge nugget. I'll share it with your listeners. And, you know, 
there was a time in my life where I, I, I call these things like secrets and I wouldn't tips or whatever. And just because I'm very competitive, I wouldn't, cha- I wouldn't share them. But now that I'm a coach, I want people to be successful. Um, I'll, I'll share them, but here's a, it's kind of a twisted but sad reason I share them. Okay. And you know this to be true as a coach. Yeah. As sure as I share this, this secret with you guys right now, 98% of you won't even use it. So I don't care if I share it with you anymore because <laughs> I don't have to worry about you competing against me. I hope you use it, yeah. but it's just human nature. It's, like, amazing to me. You tell people what to do, and they don't do yeah, it. That's so true. So, <laughs> and, and here it is. It's so simple. Okay. Just by walking into the audition, and when you say, hey, James, thanks for the opportunity, that one little thing, is mind-boggling how much work that can get you. Because you know how many people walk in with the attitude and they don't, I mean, they don't use the simple basic things like a thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just that simple. Mm-hmm. And, and, and on the way out again, you know, and once again, knowing the person's name, mm-hmm. you know, look on your audition sheet and see who you're casting for, you know, and say, hey, so-and-so, uh, you know, what I do, one thing I learned from my manager is, um, you know, you're always going to see your casting sheet, and it's always going to have the casting director. Oh, yeah. And then it's going to have the casting assistant. Right. So if I don't know who I'm auditioning for, and let's say the casting director is, um, you know, Steve, 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 whoever, right. and the assistant is, is Joe. Mm-hmm. Well, if I don't know who they are, I'm going to go, hey, uh, are you Joe? I'm always going to go with the mm-hmm. casting assistant. Got it. And, and a lot of times they're going to go, no, I'm not Joe, I'm Steve. Oh, hey, Steve. Thanks for the opportunity. And then on the way out again, after I kill him with the audition, I'm going to go again. I'm going to go, hey, Steve, I really appreciate the opportunity. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Whatever. Sounds so simple, but you would be amazed how much that difference makes. I, you're speaking my language, and which you spoke my language before on my other show. I completely agree with that. And I tell, I tell my clients, even when they go in for interviews and just in other, in other industries, you know, know your audience. I always like know what the company's about a little bit, you know. Give them a little, you know. You know thank you for having. That. I love this company for blank, blank. Hi, R. I mean, just like just look eye contact, just like please and thank you. I mean, those things are so important that people forget about nowadays in this kind of technology behind the screen society. They forget that the quote unquote old fashioned, you know, manners do get in handy, and people do remember you. They remember that. Oh, and they told. And here's another thing. Let- Another thing that you just touched on, okay, when you, and we're talking to actors now right now right. For, for a second, right. and they, they know what I'm talking about. When you get an audition, you get an email from your manager or your agent. It tells you, you know, who you're auditioning for. Now, this is, this is another huge thing. I'm, I'm not going to give you all my secrets. So no, of course, of course not. I know, of course not. <laughs> this, this, is, this is huge. On the sheet, it'll tell you who your producers are, who your writers are, who your directors are. And this is where your work starts. Before you even mm-hmm. start, in my opinion, before you eat, wa- start, even start working on your sides. What I do, the first thing I do, is I go to moviedatabase.com. Okay, yep. And I type in every one of those people's names on the list. I know where they're born, where they come from, <laughs> what they've done. Right. And I research them. Yes. And... So when I walk in the room, once again, and what I'm really looking for, I just like because I think it's respectful because, mm-hmm. trust me, they're researching you. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They, they research you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what, you know, hey, let's be real. It's mm-hmm. an ego business. Yes, it is. So if you take the time to, and, you know, don't be fake or phony, but if you research people like that, what you're going to find, I guarantee you, you're going to go through the resume and you're going to see a movie that you love one of your favorite movies, and you're going to go, oh, my gosh. You'll get excited about it right there. Mm-hmm. Keep that reality and keep that realism in the audition. And when you go in there and you, go, and you happen to have that moment, sit down, and you meet the person, you say, I just, I just want to tell you, man, that movie, I loved it. I love that scene. But don't, make, don't go crazy. Don't be a sucker ass or nothing like that. Right, no, of course but not. you know what I mean? Be, be legit. Once mm-hmm. again, they're looking at people all day long. Yeah. They're going to know that you took the time to research them, pay them the respect. And if you have something genuine to share, even better. Mm-hmm. 
separate you from everybody else. Well, isn't it true? And I've talked to enough, you know, enough actors that sometimes you'll go in for an audition for a role, but if you are, you know, nice, kind, considerate, though, and and do a good job, of course, they may call you in later for another role. Correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's not about it's. As a matter of fact, I mean, what, what you're talking about is, is exactly this, and you couldn't be more right. It's a numbers game, okay? So it's the same as any other business. It's, you know, 10 yeah. three, one okay? For yeah. every 10 auditions, you're going to get three people that are going to, like, really love you, and one person's going to hire you. So you've you got to be going out. So it's not, you know, every time I do an audition, my conversation with my manager afterwards is we made another friend. Mm, I like that. Because, yeah, because you just want to make friends because it might not be this part, but if you do it right and you do a great performance and you got to realize they're, what, what a lot of people, the mistake a lot of actors make, especially when they're coming up, they put these casting directors, they put these um, writers, even the producers, they put them on these pedestals. What they don't realize is that each and every one of them has a job. Mm -hmm. And if they're not successful, they don't get work anymore either. If the casting director can't fill the part, oh, that's true. they're not going to get hired again by this, this producer. If the writer mm -hmm. can't write something that he can hire some actors that bring it to life where it gets you know, recognized and is a great thing, they're not going to see. So everybody wants you to win. Mm -hmm. They all want you to win, mm -hmm. so you, you, it's it's a win win situation for everybody. And then once they find somebody, you know, if you're sitting there and they've got two amazing actors that all do the exact same performance, who are they going to hire? Well, they're going to hire the person who has the better personality, the better manners, somebody that they know. If they got to work with you for the next two months or even a week for fourteen hours a day, they're going to be cool about being on the set with you. Mm -hmm. And I know that in your in your in your coaching, you, you're telling you're talking to them about the mechanics of stuff. So, are you also coaching them on how to psychologically handle um, going through this business? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, that's where the other coaching side of me comes because mm -hmm. what I've learned as a coach, as you know, there's so much when you can tap in, when you can take your gift as an actor and be able to bring those lines to life mm -hmm. and then add in your spirit mm -hmm. and, and knowing who you are and having that confidence, you're unstoppable. And when you're at, when it's, when you, when you just release it to the universe and you know, your higher power, or, you know, for me, you know, Jesus mm -hmm. and God, you know, but if you just know, you don't, you not come from a desperate place. You just walk in, mm -hmm. you take care of business, you, you do what you, when you're in that place and you got that right mindset, mm -hmm. it's not about, oh man, I hope I did it right. Did they like me? Uh, did I deliver that line right? Did I do? No. <laughs> it's about you come in and you bring a character to life. It's not about just reading lines, it's right. about bringing a character in there and being confident about it. And so when you put the, all of it together the technique, mm -hmm. the etiquette, and then the, the spirit side of it, dude, come on, man. You're unstoppable. That's true. So and yeah. then it's like, and then once again what happens, James, is the whole thing is like, when you've got the, the what me and James are talking about, what we do as a coach, mm -hmm. when you add that side to it and your light's just shining, mm -hmm. it, it almost doesn't even matter what you say in the room anymore. That's true. Because you walk out of the room and they'll be like, Who is that? Know, like, that? Who is that? Like that? Yeah. I like him, dude. Exactly, I, I, exactly. I, they just want to be around you. Yeah, that's very, very you true. You know what I mean? I, I, yes, I do know what you mean. I do know that personally. So does that makes sense, that. James? It totally does because you had it, I had it when I met you the first time. Oh, so I, I know I it. You. Okay, so hold on. We're going to go to a commercial break. We're back with Real Andrews yeah, here on the Super it? Organizer Show. Hold on, folks. kid and you thought about what you wanted to be, teaching was at the top of your list. But things changed. And as you got older, teaching didn't seem like the best option anymore. 
so you're thinking you'll be something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Now you want to be a doctor. You don't think teachers save lives? 25 at a time. An actress? Try playing a different role every time the bell rings. How about a scientist? Ever heard of physics? Chemistry? Who do you think teaches that? Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, and taking learning far beyond the four walls of the classroom. It's time to recognize that great things are happening in teaching and put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Find out how you can make more at teach.org. Make more. Teach. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. Talk about a rush! One of the greatest drop and fastest roller coasters is the Steel Phantom. It opened in April 1991 at Kennywood Amusement Park in West Mifflin, PA. <laughs> That's a funny name. And it has a vertical drop of 225 radical feet into a narrow ravine with a speed of 80 miles per hour. <laughs> That's fast. And that's news that you can use from AdrenalineRadio.com. Each time you mow, are you picking up the clippings or leaving them down? This is Nick Federoff with today's Things Green Garden Minute. It's a lifelong controversy whether or not we pick up the clippings after we mow our lawn or just leave them there. You see, if you pick them up, you can make compost out of it. But if you're not making compost... Aren't you just throwing it away? The other thing is, if you leave them down, doesn't it make your lawn unsightly? On top of that, did you know that green, I mean really green greenage, actually takes away from your lawn? Yeah, it pulls nutrients out of it. So what do we do? Well, if the truth was known, I'm a big fan of leaving the clippings there for a major reason. If you take those clippings and really cut them down, go over the lawn area two, three times so that it forces it down, there's enough nitrogen in each clipping to put back in the soil as opposed to taking it out. So mulch away. This is Nick Federoff with today's thingsgreen.com Garden Minute. We are back. This is the SOS Show with James Bond Jr. And I have my guest, Rial Andrews. Rial. Hey, buddy. How are you? Sorry, I lost you. No, no problem. We're good. All right, so um, you bring up, you bring up well, before the break, you bring up a really good point that I always talk about, and that is, um, you know, especially in, in acting, or not just in acting, because I'm in the entertainment field, you know, going for hosting jobs, whatever. It's all about... Um, your persona, this what you how you come across sometimes is the major reason people want to work with you. And I know with me in my interviews, and I, and I always give thanks and gratitude at the beginning of every episode I do, and I give thanks and gratitude to you because because we met, had such a great time on my other show that you you agreed to come on this show and continue to work with me. And that's that's a great example of people out there that you meet people. You said make a new friend, so to speak, in the industry, and you never know how far the relationship will continue. Yeah. I mean, my, in my coaching session just the other day, um, that's, it's funny you say that's exactly what my coach said to me. And, you know, he said, what I want you to start focusing on now is creating great relationships because you never know where those relationships Mm -hmm. are in being intentional about creating them, you know, Mm -hmm. and just being, a because, you're right. It's very, very important. You never, yeah, you, you never know who is in your life, why they're in your life. When you, I mean, I'm at 53. I think you're somewhere up there. Yeah. How many times have we come back full circle with people? I mean, you know, umpteen years later, and you're yes. like, wow. I have. I it's actually no, have. It's yes. no coincidence. Yes. Oh no, I, I don't believe in coincidence anyway. I don't believe in coincidence. Yeah. I just believe I believe I don't believe in luck or coincidence. I just believe that you know you're on a certain path, and if you stay in your lane, things will sometimes come back around to you. If it's meant to come back around mm-hmm. to you, and so you're right. I had, I had a friendship that we didn't speak for 12 years, just because we hadn't seen each other. There was nothing; we just hadn't seen each other. And one day on a random Tuesday at Target in West Hollywood, he walks by. And I'm at a Starbucks. You know what I mean? And now our friendship's back to the way it was, even better than it was before, because we're we're older and mature. And it's just like funny. I mean, twelve years, twelve years. Right, right. You just you just never know. You just never you just never you just never know. Um, do you teach actors that? I mean, or what is your thought on 
aren't actors kind of entrepreneurs in a way? Aren't they kind of aren't they the oh they're selling kind of themselves? They're they're the brand. They're the ultimate entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I mean, you are your own entity, aren't you? You're your mm-hmm. own brand. You're, and that's where you're. You, that's why it's got you got to have all of it. You got to have all of it. You know, and a lot of these. One of the things I first learned, and if you've been around long enough, a lot of these actors that a lot of actors are aspiring to be because they're so unique and so cool and, you know, weird or <laughs> yeah. whatever. If, if you ever get to meet them, that's, that's, you know, I know when I was coming up as an actor all the way over there, long, far away in Canada, <laughs> a small yeah. town called yeah. Vancouver. That's right. You know, I used to watch people, you know, specifically like Jack Nicholson. He was one of my biggest uh, inspirations when I was coming up. Mm-hmm. And I, I used to, like, practice doing scenes like Jack Nicholson, thinking that how great of an actor he was and how amazing the characters were that he would play. And then one day I actually met him for real. Oh wow! Okay. What I took what I took away from that was I was like, "Oh my gosh, he's not acting. That's who he is. Mm. He's just weird. He's crazy. <laughs> you know. And th- th- that's just him bringing his light. That's just him bringing his light and being able. You know, yeah, you do go and play different shit, but you, you know what I'm talking I about? Do. Is that, mm. that 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 uniqueness about him? That's his gift. That's his light. I like that. Yeah, it's true. Right. You get, to, you get to meet Jack Nicholson. I mean, so he was really a cool guy. Yeah, he's really. I met him at, um, you know, I met him. I did a movie called Postcards from the Edge. Oh, yeah. Carrie Fisher. Yeah, Carrie Fisher. And all the A name lists were in that movie. Yes. And um, Carrie Fisher had a party. It was my first big Hollywood party. Okay. With all the cast and whatever who was doing that movie and everybody who was anybody in Hollywood was was there and I'm sitting at the table eating and then this guy comes over and he goes, Do you mind if I sit down here? And I look up with Jack Nicholson, I went, What? Wow. I go, Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. I love it. That's great. Um, so now, you know, because I, I had a couple actors recently I talked to who were like, when I said to them that they were entrepreneurs, they're like, what, huh? I'm like, you are. Like, you guys, I won't say their names, obviously, but they're like, I mean, I'm like, you are, I mean, I look at you, I, I'm very business oriented because I come, I come from that kind of culture and I have my own business and everything, but there's, you know, this is a business. Acting is a business, I mean, right? And you are, you are the brand. You are a business. Well, especially now, you know, more so than ever, you know, you, you, you got to be able to brand yourself, you know, you, you've got, you know, speaking engagements, books, um, you know, producing, writing, you know, directing, you know, there's so much that you can do, you know, you can take your gift, change the world, get a platform, you know, create, um, you know, give back, you know, I look at it like when, you know, you're an actor and especially when you become a successful actor, it puts you on a platform where you can do great with it or you can do waste whatever with it, you know. Yeah. I'm always about giving back, but yeah, so it all becomes about your brand, you know. That's something I learned recently, if you notice. Everything I do is built around that logo somebody created oh, yeah. for a couple of years now, yeah. and it's all built around that, whether it's the acting coaching or my fitness coaching or my fishing mm-hmm. team or you know, my success coaching, you know, different titles, but all around that logo, that brand, that brand, which is Ray Andrews. Now, I want to tell you that I just want, I told my last guest last week, too, I like your website because it's very, very, very easy to navigate. And Thank you. people people forget that. I coach people all the time on that when, when we're setting up things for them. Because, you know, this is sometimes this is your website sometimes is their first impression of you right so yours was easy it's easy to click it's 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 big it's bold it tells you what's going on immediately so i I want to tell you i really appreciate your website thank you i gotta i'm blessed tom nobili he does all my sites i actually if you follow me you'd know who tom was tom is somebody i've been training now for four or five months and uh he's 
down, I believe, well over 50 pounds. He's doing amazing. Wow. And he just stays with it. But, yeah, he's, he's a champion. And he just – because the website is – I call it the mothership, if you do it right. Okay? So railandrews.com is my mothership. And then all the different things come out of there, or the spider web, if you want to call it. Got because, it. And you know that's that's a nugget right there for people listening. If mm-hmm. you are, if you if you, I don't care if you're a mechanic, pizza delivery, um, <laughs> yeah. actor, scientist, pilot, whatever. You know, Jim Jim Rohn will tell you, and all the great motivational people will tell you. If you don't own your name right now, your own domain name, if it's oh, available, yeah. you better just go buy it. I agree. You, you need to have your own name. If it's a, you know, some of you, you won't be able to get your name if you have a name that's common or whatever. Yeah. It'll be gone. But then you better get, you know, like for example, Michelle. You know, my wife, she has Michelle J. Andrews. You know, because Michelle Andrews wasn't available. But you know, I have all my son's name, my daughter's name. I own them already. They don't know. They don't even know that I have them, but I have them. I bought them because I know one day they're going to want to use them. True. And that's that's your name, you know, for nine ninety nine or whatever. You should go to GoDaddy right now. That's right. And buy your name because that's right. if you don't, here, check this out. What happened to me, James? When I when I got because I didn't know this back in the day, but yeah. when I started working and then got on General Hospital, and by the time I figured out. Somebody, I heard it somewhere. Somebody told me that I needed to buy my own domain name. Okay. I went to buy my name, and my name's weird, right? Ray yeah. Alan, so <laughs> yes. no one who would have that. <laughs> Somebody owned it. Oh, oh. Because yeah, because if you wait until you become successful oh. or something when you need it, somebody's already figured it out and bought it, and they're, they're going to try to sell you your, your name. name, right? Your name, right? And that's what somebody was trying to do. They were trying to sell me my name. And, um, you know, I just waited for, I wasn't, they wanted to charge me a lot of money and I just waited, waited. And when they finally figured out I wasn't going to buy it, then I was able to buy it. Yeah. And then I got it and I've owned it ever since, you know? Yeah, no, I learned that lesson a while back. And also what my, my super organizer was like, okay, get all it, get the dot org, get the dot, you know, just get them, just get them. I don't know if I'm going to use them yet or what, and some I've used for different things, but other things I'm like, just, just own it, have it. Do you want anybody else taking it? Because that's your, it's you, it's you, it's your brand, it's your, it's your thing. Um, so it's funny. So listeners out there, that's that's a that's a good one. That's a very a very good tip if you're going to do this. Um, but then again, it goes back to your brand. It goes back to you being the entrepreneur. Going back to you being the one looking out for yourself. Because uh, you have to look out for yourself, obviously, especially in this in this business. Um, now I want to talk to you about uh, time management because that is something that does permeate even. In acting, you know, you have, to, you have to manage your time there between auditions and classes and 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 regular work and life and like you said, your kids and so what is what is what when I say time management is how do you finish that sentence? Uh, we we're talking to Real Andrews. He was giving us some great advice about uh, about being in the business and about owning yourself. And uh, hello, hey buddy, that's weird. I could hear you, but no, I said time management is organizing your life, so it's doable. I like that. That's a and, very simple answer. And, I like and, that. And your time management is getting the most out of twenty four hours. <laughs> exactly, twenty four seven, like your thing says. Of course, no, it is. I mean, that's yeah. I, that's completely what it is. It's I'm like, and I just, I just before you came on, I told people, you know, the one truth that I learned is that you can't do everything all the time, and that's not, mm-hmm. it's, not even, it's not even about that. It's about prioritizing what needs to be done, and how do you do that? So for your yeah. practice, so what are some of the things that you tell people? What what'd you say, James? So some of the, what are some of the, what are some of the lessons that you um, share with your with your uh, clients when it comes to when it comes to time management? Some basic lessons. Yeah, well, there's actually there's a, I actually have three things that that are that are huge. Um, one, I learned a long time ago is to start my day off with Rayal time. Ooh, okay. And okay. Rayal time when I first heard this, I basically was doing thirty hours of stuff a day in twenty four hours. So and there was this guy, I was at this personal growth thing and he was like, You need to take like 
an hour to yourself every morning before you get to your emails, before you mm. get to Facebook, before you answer any calls, before you do anything, and just you know meditate, work out something, do something that's just all about affirmations, all about you. And I remember I was sitting, I was sitting in the audience, and I was like, "Are you going to do an hour?" What do you, who, who has an hour? What are you talking about? You know, I'm like, how am I going to like, what? I don't have enough time as it is. I'm a, but, you know, I'm very coachable. And um, he ended his training by saying, listen, I know I'm freaking some of you guys out talking about taking an hour or whatever to yourself. But uh, just start with two minutes. Take two minutes to yourself. Okay. And I was like, okay, I can do that. Two minutes. Well, that two minutes has evolved into about two hours. Oh, minutes. really? Okay. Yeah. Now I I get up early, okay. but it's worth it to me. Okay. The value that I when I every and I don't do it very often, but if for some reason I I don't have my two hours and my two hours looks something like this. I get up. I have some quiet time. That's when I just getting my spark and taking my vitamins and stuff, and I don't mm-hmm. want no no noise, no outside anything, just quiet, mm-hmm. just, just being. Then I go to worship music. Very good. Which is, you know, I'll spend maybe 30 minutes on worship minutes, music, and then from worship music I'll go to um, motivational, inspirational you know, um, audio book of some sort. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, and, and a lot of times when I'm doing the, um, the gospel music and, uh, worship gospel and or worship music. And when I'm listening to the audio book, I'm do I'm multitasking at this point. I'm doing that while I'm working out usually, whether it's running or, um, spinning, on a bike, mm-hmm. sometimes even boxing. I, I like to do some kind of cardio. Because here's a here's a here's a lesson for you. Please tell us. The the reason I do that is because, especially if you're doing something like running mm-hmm. or spinning something, you go into a hypnotic state, and your body is receptive to those outside messages, affirmations. That's why I'm listening to. Um, you know, inspirational, motivational, uh, personal growth books Mm -hmm. while I'm doing that. Um, And then I'll bring it home, and that's when I turn on the, the, you know, I like techno, trans music, whatever, and I just jam it and bring it home. And that's kind of how my day starts every day before I make myself available to, to the world. So that's the first thing I do. Okay. The second thing I do... Which was huge, and I learned this at the same conference. Okay. Was everybody gets up and they go, they get, uh, they've got uh, Facebook. Yep. They've got Twitter. Yep. They've got email. Yep. <laughs> they've got maybe phone calls. Yeah. Um, whatever it is they do. But specifically with your Facebook, your Twitter, you know, you, you know, if you're one of those people that's a part of your life, you know, mm-hmm. you're posting on Facebook, you're responding to Facebook, you're liking pictures, maybe you're tweeting, maybe you're doing Instagram, you know, then you, you got to get to your emails or whatever. What This will be huge for you, but you have to do it. And what you do is you say, I'm going to do... 15 minutes Facebook, Okay. 15 minutes Twitter, 15 minutes LinkedIn, 15 minutes um, Instagram, 15 minutes returning my emails. Okay. Whatever number that is, okay. you literally got to set an alarm clock, and even if you've got 20 more emails to answer, <laughs> when that 15 minutes, you stop and move right on to the next thing. I like that. Okay. What you're going to find is you're actually going to become way more productive. Mm-hmm. Because when you don't do that, you sit down at your Facebook, and next thing you know, you've been on Facebook for two hours. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
and then you've been on Twitter. You can't, you don't, you know, so that's the other thing that, that, that I do. And the last thing I do is really new for me. It's, and I'm still mastering it, but it's amazing. It's simple. It works. It's put stuff in a calendar. I love it. I live by my calendar. I love it. Yes. And, and I don't. You see, I, I've had a photographic memory all my life. Oh, okay. And okay. I've always just kept it in my mind, in my head, and it don't work. No more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Either I'm getting old or I'm getting too busy because I've just dropped the ball too many times and I don't like it. So I'm yes. starting to use a calendar. Yes. A calendar, I will, I'm going to second, third, and fourth that motion, everybody. And people who know me know I live, uh, my calendars are my, I will, you know, in a fire, I will grab my calendars. <laughs> no, I'm like, I mean, it's like, I just, I live by calendars. I do. I live by them. I think that these, these so, help me. That's, that's good. my three tips for time management. I like that. I mean, so when people say to you, though, well, like you, like you said at the beginning yourself, well, I don't have any time for, you know. So your thing is start small. If it's two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, start out small. Then stop saying I can't or I don't have, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You just got to make you, – you, you got to see the value in it. Mm-hmm. And you and the value in it is if you're more productive, you'll get more done. If you get more done, you'll be more successful. You know, if you're more productive, you won't be worn out. There'll be more of you to share with the people that matter, which also brings me to a point. With that calendar, this is huge. It's really, you know, and I, I, I'm not – 100% at it, and I, I always got to remind myself to get back at it because it's so important, especially for us crazy, busy people, which yes. is pretty much the whole world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at this point. Well, I know us especially, but yes. <laughs> yeah. You need to schedule a couple things in your calendar. Okay. You need to schedule date night. Yes. You need to schedule Rayel time, yes. James time. Yes. And you need to put it in your calendar. You need to schedule family time. You need to schedule daddy dad or daughter daughter daddy night. You need to schedule boys night out. You know, yes. you need to schedule yes. those things and put it in your calendar. And here's where people mess up. Okay. Just like I had it scheduled in my calendar that I was doing James's radio show at ten o'clock on Friday. I had other things come along since me and James talked Mm -hmm. in the same time thing, and I had to say, no, I'm not available. I had to look for a different time. Mm -hmm. When it's our own personal stuff, and you got date night scheduled in there, or you got James Uh, night, and somebody says, well, I got date night scheduled at 8 o'clock on Thursday, and somebody reaches out to me and says, hey, man, you want to get together? How's Thursday night at 8? You'll look at your calendar, and you'll see date night, and you'll go, yeah, that's that's good. Oh, that's I, I can so make true. That work. That's so true. Yes. And you'll and you won't pay yourself the same respect mm-hmm. that you would pay. No disrespect to James. I love James, but you'll pay yourself less disrespect than you would somebody you barely even know that's got a radio show and and that you committed to. You need to spend pay the same respect to yourself, your family, your loved ones. That's so true. That's so true. You're speaking my language. So true because I recently have done that i start putting into my it's just like speaking like reading my mind i just recently started scheduling time because my kids and grandkids are not in la so i have to actually go to them they're in sacramento and so i actually have to so i when i schedule i have to really schedule it but like it is true i'm like well i'll send them a present and i'll see them another time and i'm like i started doing that and i was like that's not good so two weeks ago i went i scheduled it to scheduled it scheduled two days in Sacramento with them, two full days, no work. I didn't do emails. I didn't answer phone calls. I went there and spent time with my grandkids, and it was the best time on earth. I'm leaving after the show to get on a plane and go and see my granddaughter for her birthday this weekend. It's like, I, but I really had to like, I had offers this weekend that I I turned. I said, nope, I'm I got a schedule. I got things to do with my granddaughter. But you're right. I almost was like, well, I'll send her a present, call her, and I'll see her another time. Like, why would I do that? It's my granddaughter. But it, it's, yeah. so easy. it's so easy to do. That's, that's so, it's so true, man, and it's huge because it's like you just – that's more – I mean, that's why we do what we're doing, right? 
But people lose sight of that. They forget and they get so caught up and it's like, you know, you're no good to anybody if you have nothing in your tank. And your tank needs to get refilled with quiet time. Um, time management is huge. That's why I love to talk about it. Time management means you got more time for yourself, more quiet time, more time for your loved ones. I mean, how many times so you never want to be in that situation where, and you know, it's all about putting value to it. If we, let me think of something like, uh, you know, most can relate to the value of it. To say like if Michael Jackson came back for whatever and he was doing one concert you're, and you've got tickets to I, I don't care what's going on in your life you'll make it happen. Uh, that's true. That's right. <laughs> if we came back to life, you yes, especially you, yes. But yeah, you, you're right. You'll, you'll give it that value, but you right. don't give the same value to your grandkids or something. God forbid, you know something mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. and you were supposed to go see them. Now you don't get that chance. Exactly. Exactly. And it's one of those things where I have to, I've had to learn to say no and not, not in a bad way. Just been, I just had to learn how that right now the opportunities come my direction that are all great opportunities. And I'm so excited and I want to do it. I want to do it. It's like, but I can't do them all. I can't, I have, or I can't do them all at the exact time periods they want me to do them. So I've had to learn to say, not right now. Thank you so much. Maybe next time or not. I mean, I've had to turn things down. Because mm-hmm. I am important. Because you're right. If my health falls apart, then I'm no good to nobody. You know, and then I won't have yeah. that. I can't, then I can't do those opportunities. Time management, buddy. Manage it. <laughs> I am trying. So, so I'm, I'm very excited that you're doing the, the acting coaching. I think, you know, you're somebody who, like I said, who has the inside track, who's been in the business and has done this. So, I mean, but how do you, how are you feeling about your kids? Because you know how it is wanting to get in the business. Well, you know, there was a long time where I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I'm sure. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's not going to happen. But that's actually one of the things that I offer to people. Is like I call it, your, you know, your, on, your audition bodyguard or your on-set bodyguard because – so many of these parents are putting their kids in a situation. Um, it's a very, not a nice world out there. So, right. you know, I'll take them on the audition. Or, or they don't have time to work in. So I'm going to take them. I'm going to prepare them, help them out, you know, and then protect them from those. But, you know, it's their dreams. It's what they want to do. As long as, and the difference is I know what to look for and what not to look for and what they can get away with and what they can't because they will try to abuse you and get the most out of you that they can out of your kids. So I'm okay with it, but also I'm here to protect them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. Now what has, what has becoming, since becoming a coach, what has it done for you personally? Well, becoming a coach for me, and it, it, you know, it's 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 very rewarding to help to breathe, breathe life into other people's dreams and help them to realize that they have greatness and help them to know that they're not just taking up space on this earth and they're important. And it also makes you realize, you know, be able to look at yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, gosh, what a difference. And every day I'm working and evolving, but man, what a different rail that's looking me in the mirror today than was looking me in the mirror a year ago, right, you know, right. or even months ago. Right. And is it and is it okay? Does it does age matter when you start? Does age matter to me who I call? Well, no, just period. Just in, in general, in life, is it, does it? Do you feel does age matter when you decide to start? You want to change? You want to? You want to do something different? Does age matter? No, I don't think age matters. I mean, it's all about timing, as you know. I mean, I would wish for everybody that they find out earlier than later, but it's all about your timing and stuff like that. But. You know, it's so easy for us to look and go, man, I wish I would have known this earlier or that earlier, but that wasn't my time. It wasn't meant to be. But I think, you know, knowing what I know, Mm -hmm. 
I know the value, let's just put it that way, the value and what a blessing it would be for anybody to find out sooner than later. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny because I, because I changed my life after 40. It's like I did a whole complex start from scratch. And it was one of the best things. And, I mean, I, and when I was going through it, my friends were like, oh, my God, you're crazy. Oh, my God. And I was like, no, I feel better. Because now, even though I'm starting from scratch, and it was my choice to do so, now I can really create what exactly I want. And I always try to give that lesson to people because I deal with people who are, you know, change of life. Um, that could be widowhood, divorce, you know, um, you know, kids are grown. And I try to tell them, like, no, you can start now, too. It's great. I like, just get it because as long as you're still alive, there's time. Right, Riel? Absolutely. You know, as long as you wake up, there's always, there's always a chance. I always feel like every day, you know, and I know you hear these kind of cliche things, but, it's, it, but it really is so true. Every day you wake up, it's a, it is a new slate, so to speak. You know. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new day and a new opportunity, right? That's right. And uh, I try to tell my, my, my clients, my coaching clients that all the time, like, say, don't worry about this. You made a mistake yesterday. It's fine. Today, we're not going to make that mistake today. We're going to just be something else. Um. You know, so I want people to, I mean, I'm going to be posting some stuff on my page, uh, the Super Organizer Show on Facebook, um, some more links to Real, because I want you guys to really go and check him out, because he is just so great. And can you tell folks where they can find you? Yeah, the best thing, you know, like my mothership is realandrews.com, that's my name, R-E-A-L, andrews.com, or joincoachreal.com, but realandrews.com has all my sites links to all my different sites. Um, so that's a great place to start. And it is. It, everyone, he, you know, everything is on here. It's a great place to get there and get information. And I'll be posting more links of, to that on my pages because you should be talking to this man and getting the wisdom that comes, that comes from him. I should get it from him. Real? Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm always open to, you know, they can always write me a question. I respond to them. Myself, as you know, so I'm always here for everybody, and I appreciate you having me on the show. Congratulations with the success of your shows, and hey, you know where to find me. You, you definitely will be back on the show again. We're gonna have we have more topics. We're gonna you are now you are now part of my village. Yay! I like this. Sounds good. <laughs> Take care, Rial. Thanks for being on. Nope. Take care, James. Bye. Take care. Bye. So that was Real Andrews. Um, he's actually, I didn't mention this, he will be on Days of Our Lives. He actually got a role on there coming up. I don't know when his air date is, but any of you soap fans out there who knew him from General Hospital, he has a role on Days of Our Lives coming up. I don't, I don't know for how long or how big it is, but it's going to be exciting because he's such a great actor, and we haven't seen him on TV in a long time. But he is a great coach, and again, I will post stuff on on my pages uh, so you can get to him. But he brings up a good point, which I always talk about because I'll end the show with this, is that it doesn't matter where you start – or how big or small you start, just start. Just start. No more excuses, folks. The excuses are just are dead. No more excuses. No more. You can you can find a way. I found a way. You can find a way too. And if you need help and assistance, there are people out there like we Al, like myself, who are there to help assist you and support you and be your biggest cheerleader. That was another SOS show here on AdrenalRadio.com. I want to thank Brian and everybody here. Today, we had a good show, and you can find me at the SOS underscore show on Twitter and Black Hope LA on Twitter, James Live Jr. on most social media platforms. We also have a Facebook page, The Super Organizer Show. Of course, you can find me there. The SuperOrganizerUniverse.com is my blog and the granddaddy of them all, my website, the SuperOrganizer.com. You guys are the best, and I will talk to you guys next week. adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's always motivating me to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Keyboard Cat, YouTube star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Start yours today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. Hi. 
I'm James Lott Jr. Do you feel like you're working harder, not smarter? Have you ever wondered how others get things done? Are you ready to invite change in your life? I've heard the SOS, and I'm here to help. Join me, James Lott Jr., the host of the Super Organizer Show, every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, as my guest and I offer suggestions on how to run your life more efficiently. That's every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Super Organizer Show, here on AdrenalineRadio.com. Follow me on Twitter at the SOS underscore show.